I'd just like to welcome you all to your first ever demotivational seminar where I can teach you how you can not achieve any of your goals and how your fondest dreams and ambitions will remain unfulfilled. <laughs> First of all, a little bit about myself. Um, as my day job, I'm a creative, which means I get paid to come and play views. And this is what a typical day of work looks like for me. And um, what I tend to find is that I really love working on these things that I work on you know, during the day and at night, and I really enjoy doing it. In fact, I love ideas so much that I try to find other side projects to do at the same time as well. What you're looking at here is still from animation I did uh, a few years back. It, um, it took me 40 months to finish and I ran for three and a half minutes when I was done, which is a pretty ugly ratio. So when it started in 2008, I decided I really wanted to do some stuff and I sat down and wrote myself down five goals of five things that I really wanted to achieve out of 2008. And at the start of the year, they all looked pretty plausible. I thought, yeah, I can get this done. Shouldn't be a problem at all. So um, let's have a look at how we did. First of all, I was going to write a short story a week. I set up a blog for the 50 second floor and um, was writing a story a week, and you can see by the end of the year I got up to number 24. I didn't even get halfway. Next thing was um, volunteer work. I um, started doing some volunteer work for a, um, a crisis counseling line, and I did uh, six months worth of training and started doing actual work for six months, and just started horribly clashing with everything else I was doing. Eventually I had to give it up at the end of the year. After that, um, well, at the same time, I've been playing some music with um, some friends of mine and we've been working in a band for about uh, two years or so while I was out doing all this other stuff. We've been looking for a singer for all this time. While I was out doing all this other stuff, the singer found them. That's their city you can see up there. We're going to be playing an exhibition. I've given one recommendation. Don't bother on exhibition to cruise your drunken friends. Because all the enthusiasm that they have at the start will kind of sway, like weighing a little bit when they sober up. So the exhibition never happened. Also, I wanted to work less, and I had this big theory about work. The theory was that work only fills up the amount of spare time that I actually leave it. So if I had to cram all this other stuff in there, work can actually use less time up. I mean, that makes perfect sense. This is what actually happened. I was working just as much as I, you know, always did, but um, all the other stuff was kind of packed on the top. And what started to happen was, I started driving a little bit nuts because I was getting really tired, I was getting really stressed, getting a little bit crazy. And um, the other thing I started to notice was that every single thing that I was doing was becoming short. Like even things like, you know, they used to enjoy, like things like going out with friends, it just became something else I had to get through to get to the end of the week. And this is the first thing I think I really learned, that your free time, it's not disposable. You can't just carve it up with work and you can't just fill it up with a whole bunch of different things. You kind of need spare time yourself like you need oxygen. Also, I found with a lot of the creative projects, it's not like you need tons of time for creativity, but you need time for your brain to process those subconscious thoughts and actually give you those ideas back. And if you fill it up with too much stuff, then that just doesn't happen in the same sort of way. The other thing I really think I learned was you can't turn something you love into a chore. If you turn something into like just a bullet point list of things you're just going through again and again and again, you just make yourself hate it. And you love it, so that's kind of a really, almost a waste in a way. But the other thing I really learned from 2008 was all these things that had happened. I started looking at them in slightly different ways. I started thinking about, you know, the blog, for instance, and um, I came back and looked around and thought, you know what, I've actually written 20,000 words of fiction. Now, this is the first things that I've actually started writing since, the first fiction I've actually started writing since high school. It just kind of came out of nowhere, and that's all still there. And I've kept working on it since. So 20,000 is not really a bad place to start, even when it feels like it happened by accident. The other thing was that the exhibition didn't happen, but I picked up the paintbrush for the first time since I was in high school. So um, even though the exhibition's not there, the painting is, and I'm still painting now, which is actually pretty cool. The other thing was that um, I really learned from the band like just how powerful being really single-mindedly focused on what you want to do. Really is. I really admire the guys and how they've actually gone. They've now got you know songs on the radio and things like that, and amazing CD recorded. And I think I really learned that if you don't look after yourself first, it's really really hard for you to actually help anybody else out. You do have to learn to take care of yourself. But on top of all these things, I think the thing that I learned most of all was really the importance of wasting time. So um, <laughs> thank you. Thanks for letting me waste five minutes.